Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Master Paul. I'm honored to be connecting with you today. It is March 27th, it is a Monday. And we just came off a big weekend here in Honolulu at Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center. There was a lot of effort to, uh, to train new students in Tao calligraphy, which is the fifth power, writing power. <clears throat> it's truly amazing how fast students learn. And they were, they were working with the calligraphy Da I, the greatest love. And uh, it, was, it was just great to be in the energy field. And Master, Hem uh, Master Orlena had brought with her the blessing that Master Shah had made for her, the newest Da I calligraphy uh, on rice paper. <clears throat> and uh, he had stamped it and, and blessed it. And I tell you, I had no idea the, the extraordinary power that is in these these calligraphies, these newest ones, just beyond measure. So if you ever had a chance to be in front of a Master Shah, especially blessed calligraphy, I highly recommend it. But that's neither here nor there. Today, I wanted to invite all of you and say thank you for joining me. My name is Master Paul. I'm here to serve you. It is my honor to serve you. It is my greatest joy to, to, to hear your feedback and to hear how much your lives are being benefited by the sharing of this wisdom. I take no credit for the wisdom. Uh, neither does my Master Shah. He gives, of course, all the credit to the Creator. <clears throat> and that's the way it should be. And today's subject matter is how to see life through spiritual eyes. And when I was looking at um, today, you know, I always check in, you know, dear heaven, dear my heaven's team, uh, what should I what should I focus on for today's live stream? Sometimes I hear a series, you know, uh, do a series on this one subject matter. <clears throat> and today I vacillated. It was about opening the heart. And so I went back and forth with some different information. And then I clearly heard this message, how to see life through spiritual eyes. And so it's going to be a, a, a free flow sharing. Um, I will be offering some some information that I receive when I tune in through my spiritual channels. I'll share with you uh, the value of that information so you'll be hearing that first time as myself. <clears throat> and we're going to have a great opportunity today to practice and release blockages as well. As, I was, as always, I will be offering uh, blessings to assist all of us moving forth on our spiritual journey. And one of the uh, blessings that I will offer for anyone that is interested is a uh, and this is, you know, it'll be an honor fee associated with it, but it will be a crown chakra blessing for releasing the blockages that inhibit us from bringing ourselves to life from a spiritual perspective. So because we, we move through life with so many mindsets and beliefs and, and, and perspectives that are tainted and, and if and there's and we have a lot of stress accordingly, you know, money and relationships and everything just tends to whack us over the head. And so well, when I have received these kinds of crown chakra blessings, uh, I received one a couple months back for uh, aligning my thinking to the divine's thinking about flourishing. I got to tell you, that was one of the most profound blessings I'd ever received. It changed everything for me, my, my mindsets, I, I was less stressed. Uh, everything about it changed to me. So when we change our perspective, when we align our perspective to the divine's perspective, when we look at life through spiritual eyes, truly remarkable the differences. And, and, and it's metaphorical, it's not just the physical eyes, it's, it's our perspective, it's seeing things with our heart, um, hearing things with a, with a deeper spiritual hearing. Uh, not taking things so personal, being able to receive information, even if somebody is being very unpleasant verbally towards us, how do we receive that information? How do we offer love back to them? This is seeing life through spiritual eyes and many different examples. So we'll have a lot to talk about today, I'm sure. I have a feeling it will serve everybody very well and everybody uh, who chooses to honor could receive a crown chakra blessing for seeing life through spiritual eyes. <clears throat> so I want to pause for a moment and acknowledge all those that are tuning in and watching today. So Aloha Petra Marie, Aloha Dana, Hi Tammy, Hi Ben, Hi Sarah, Aloha Kristen Rojas and Jennifer Smith, Aloha Diane, 
Uh, Chris Louise, great to see you. Aloha, Renee. Thank you, Renee, for thank you all for your sharing. I see Renee active sharing as well, so thank you. And aloha to Zuki. Welcome, Michelle. I'm so happy you got the Power of Soul book. It is an extraordinary book. Don't plan on reading it once. It is filled with gems and typically better to read it slowly. Um, so welcome, Christy. Aloha, Susan. <clears throat> and welcome uh, also Susan Birchmore and Susan um, DeVorden. Welcome, Rashmi. And welcome, Kate Nicole. Aloha, aloha, everybody. Welcome, Kristen Strachan and Tammy Lee. Welcome, Leela. Welcome, Pat. And welcome, Patricia Dickinson. Good to see you here, Patricia. I haven't seen you in a while. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let me get some water, see if I can clear out this bug. Okay. And welcome, Ale. So let us go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Let's place our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, like a prayer position where we drop our left hand in front of our heart center. For all those listening on podcasts for the first time, welcome. And for all those that uh, that are listening on podcasts, you can watch me live on Facebook. You just friend me on Facebook. Just look around for Paul Fletcher, Soul Healer, Paul Fletcher. Friend me, follow me, and you'll know when I go live. <clears throat> dear Divine, dear the Tao, dear the Source, they're all beings of light, serving the plan of the light side. The soul of all Angels, healing angels and archangels, masters and ascended masters, lamas, sifus, gurus, saints, Buddhas and bodhisattvas, dear beloved Jesus, Mother Mary, beloved Buddha, bodhisattva, dear beloved Krishna, they're all beings of light, love you, honor you, respect you, We're so very humbled and grateful for your incredible and unconditional service to humanity. We ask for your presence today so that as we speak about how to see life through spiritual eyes, you offer your guidance, your wisdom, your insights, your blessings, and all else that is needed so that each of the souls listening and watching can receive the greatest benefit. We are most grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, love you, honor, and respect you. <clears throat> we ask you to please turn on and we invite all souls and all universes to chant with us as we offer our unconditional service with this source soul song for those that are new listening for the first time this is a blessing please just receive with your eyes closed everybody else let us close our eyes and serve Lula, 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 la li, Lula, Lula, li, Lula, Lula, li, Lula, Lula, li, Lula. Wo ai wo xin er ling. Wo ai tren ren li, Wang li hing rong her mu shi shang, Shang ai ping an he xie, Shang ai ping an he xie. I love my heart and soul, I love all humanity, join hearts and souls together, love, peace and harmony, love, peace and harmony. Ha, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. And so we've had a few more people joining in. So I'll scroll back a little bit. Welcome them. Welcome, Patricia Dickinson. Aloha, Ale. Welcome, Tammy Lee Ward. Welcome, Robrett. Welcome, Ilona. Anybody, if I had not mentioned your name, please forgive me. I did not see it pop up. And also, please uh, hit the share button. Let other people know about this. 
I have a feeling this topic will resonate with a lot of people. And so the subject matter today is how to see life through spiritual eyes. So the question becomes, what does that look like? How does, what does that feel like? How can we accomplish that? Well, the first thing to recognize is that life does not begin and end with, um, with the time that we set aside to do a spiritual practice. One of the students just got the Power of Soul book. And so the thought might be, okay, I'll sit down, I'll read a chapter, and I'll do a practice, and this is my spiritual time, and the rest of the time I go spend time with my kids, I'll spend time with my husband, I'll go and I'll do my little art and craft thing, I'll go to the computer and I'll do that, and then I'll go clean out the garage, and then I'll go pick up the kids from school, and blah, blah, blah. And that's called life. But the topic today is how to see life through spiritual eyes. And what that means is every part of our life can be addressed with a spiritual perspective, with spiritual wisdom, wisdom and insights. I said wisdom twice, didn't I? So wisdom and insights. And we can apply the practices, we can apply uh, uh, love and forgiveness, we can apply everything that you have learned in the past and will learn in the future in every moment. And so there's a, there's a, it's not that you don't know that, it's not that that comment is enlightening, it's that we don't do it. And so we want to look at why are we not in that place on a consistent basis where we're looking at life through spiritual eyes, where no matter what comes at us, we're able to see it with, uh, with a higher perspective. We're able to respond and or react from a higher place of being. And the answer is always the same. It's our own spiritual blockages. It's our karmic blockages. It's our inability to stay in love on a consistent basis. And we're going to look today at how we can uh, achieve more of that. But we're also going to work on some actual uh, logical, practical things that we can do. I want to start by offering a, a message. I'm going to connect to heaven and I'm going to ask uh, someone that... Uh, that wants to offer a message to speak. And this is typically uh, one of my one of my spiritual teachers. It could be Master Shah's soul, uh, uh, but it will be uh, not my own words. Okay. <clears throat> and so, welcome Ilona, welcome Sarah, and and also welcome to uh, Stephanie Cannon, and welcome Margaret Chong. Thank you all for your sharing. <clears throat> Just give me a moment. How? It is my honor to offer a teaching to all of you on how to look at life through spiritual eyes. One thing that many want is to have the ability to see with their third eye because they believe that this would assist them in having more validation and faith of the spirit world. In fact, this could potentially bring more confusion and disconcernment because as above, so below. The spiritual world also has imbalances, much like on earth, as above, so below. And the spiritual world wishes also to grow higher to reach their original creator's soul, no different than you. There is ego in the spiritual world. There is rank and order. There is those who wish to be seen more. And they have not learned what needs to be learned, much like in your world. And so when we ask you to look at the possibility of seeing life through spiritual eyes. It is not that you would see it through the eyes of some of the beings that are, quote, in the heavenly realms, for they are simply in a way station, in a place in between, where they will serve more or less in their own frequencies. 
to see life through spiritual eyes is to be able to address each and every experience that comes to you with the widest possible perspective. This means that in that moment when a car accident occurs, when you trip and hurt your big toe, when you receive a raise at work, when you get a surprise phone call, when you receive guidance while driving in your car to turn left instead of right, in each and every instant there is a path in front of it that led to that exact moment. There is a series of interconnected life streams that have brought about that exact and specific experience that we judge in that moment as good or bad, pleasant or unpleasant, painful or valuable. And it is in this first moment, the judgment, where our lessons begin. The first step is to release judgment, to recognize that prior to that moment, there was a series of events that led to it. Regardless of how small it is, the wind that came from the bird's wing will touch your cheek eventually. Just because you felt it now did not mean the bird flapped his wing now. This is another way of seeing everything holistically. Those who bring themselves to life with spiritual eyes start to ask why. There is an ancient statement that the Buddha, the Bodhisattva, is not fearful of what is happening at the moment. They are fearful of their next thought, word, or action <coughs> because they know that is what brings their future moments. It is so with those that are looking to become more aware in the spiritual realm. To be able to step back from the current moment and look at it instead of react to it and be with it instead of respond the ability to ask, interestingly enough, this event has come to me. I wonder what were the precursors that had brought this about. I wonder what are the lessons or experiences to be learned. I wonder what are the opportunities that this is presenting to me. This is the mind of the spiritual aspirant as they bring themselves to each moment. This is the heart of one who sees through spiritual eyes every aspect of their life. We often witness the human beings when they witness those around them. They will witness the brother fighting with the sister. They will witness uh, people talking at the malls. Uh, they will witness people at work gossiping. And we wish to advise you that these also are opportunities for seeing through spiritual eyes. There is great opportunity to see, for example, with the brother and sister fighting, that they have spiritual imbalances between them. And as the parent or the peer, there is opportunity to teach them love, to teach them forgiveness, to teach them the higher spiritual teachings, for they will carry this forth throughout their life and impact more. As the bird flaps its wing, the breadth of the bird's flap does not end on your cheek, it continues. And so does your communication to the children. In another example, there are those that gossip at work and you hear the gossiping. Some of you become involved. Some of you sit in the side and listen. Those that are unaware do not know that by saying nothing, there's actually some spiritual debt incurred. 
because if you observe it and you know that it is not appropriate that someone could be hurt from it there is on a spiritual level the responsibility to state that it is not okay to communicate in a non-loving way about another now often this does not occur because of ego and fear of being judged but what is not known is that when you do not say something you are in fact incurring debt because you are aware and in a position to do so it does not have to be rude in this example it can simply be excuse me I overheard you sharing something and I would really appreciate it if you choose to share this to please not share it with an earshot of others and ideally it would be best not to share something negative as it could create a negative result as it may or may not be true thank you and then you depart with a smile but not a smile of smirk one of love that you assisted yourself to not have additional spiritual imbalance this is a simple example of being awake with spiritual eyes. There is also opportunity on each of our journeys to work through significant suffering. The suffering could include relationship. It could include major health concerns. It could include the inability to know what direction to take next these are actually opportunities to see with spiritual eyes the bigger picture as you expand out from that moment of suffering is that there are a series of events that brought this specific set of conditions to you that you could potentially if seen through spiritual eyes resolve it using the wisdom that has been brought through all belief systems that include love and forgiveness each aspect of life serves us. It has been said by the one known as Master Shah that life is to serve, that each soul's purpose is to serve. And this, of course, includes those conditions that you are currently looking at through human eyes. The spiritual aspirant always widens their vision to encompass the what led the, to this event and how can I bring myself to this experience to no longer have more of this what I am not wanting or to have more of what I am enjoying because either way if it is something that is good that has come to you you have brought that about this should give you a pretty good footing to move forward on my suggestion to each of those listening to this teaching this sharing is to practice what is being taught to stop when you are being uh, hampered by a very negative experience or even a positive one and look at it through these wider eyes then apply the practices that you will hear more of in a little while towards the awareness this serves to minimize the elongation of the reminder that has come to you to minimize the elongation of the suffering that could occur because of looking at it through human eyes instead of spiritual eyes I am honored to have shared this wisdom with you at this time. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ha, thank you. So, um, for some that might be not new information. For some it might be very enlightening. It just depends on where you're at in your spiritual journey. <clears throat> One of the things as those who have followed me for a while they know <clears throat> that I have taught that a great deal of um, resolving our our our, our um, blockages is catching it at the level of thought 
And because thought precedes words, which precedes actions, and typically if we speak the wrong words, it creates problems. And obviously, if we make the wrong actions, it creates problems. But they all had a predecessor, which was our thoughts. And so this teaching that this um, wisdom came through was to say, to look at it from that much bigger perspective, to um, stop yourself from having that auto reaction, stop yourself from having that um, immediate response of a judgment or a criticism or, a, or a, a place of suffering or whatever it is that might be happening for you, and to ask that higher, deeper, wider question, and then to apply to apply the practices to offset it with love and forgiveness. Um, I know that that you, you hear me say at least 10 times a live stream, love and forgiveness, and I give practices including love and forgiveness. <clears throat> Why? Why is it consistent? Why does it never change? Why am I constantly uh, harping on that? Because that's what works. There is no other answer. That's what works. Now, for some, it's very difficult to apply it. They, their hearts are closed. That's very hard to find a place of love. They have been harmed. It's much easier to stay in a place of being the victim. Um, for some, some people, it's, it's much easier. Uh, for some, love is not a problem, but forgiveness can be a significant issue. For some, uh, forgiveness is not a problem. Love is an issue. And, but yet we need them both, and we need them in a reasonable balance uh, so that we can achieve um, the, the movement of us in our soul journey uh, to be able to see life through those spiritual eyes. <clears throat> when we bring ourselves to life with spiritual eyes, literally it's like um, hitting the release valve on the stress button. We all have our own levels of stress and the way we handle it is very, very different from, from one of us to the next. Some of us are just amazing at handling it. Some of us, we go through significant anxiety. We, we don't know how to deal with it, and so we go into various levels of emotions, including fears and depressions and a variety of places that we tend to find ourselves in because we don't have a skill set to work with the way life brings itself to us. The reason we don't have that skill set is because we didn't pop out of the womb with, a, with a, a, a book, a handbook, you know. Could you imagine if we all the babies came out of the womb and they had their own personal little handbook, a you know, little gold handbook, you crack it open and it says, this baby's life is going to be just like this, so make sure you teach them just like this. That would be great. But unfortunately, our parents didn't get a handbook, neither did our, our uh, belief systems, the various teachings, all of the, the educational systems. And we bring ourselves into this world and we are, um, we basically are a soul that knows these things. But in coming into this world, we're at the mercy of those that are teaching us and we're at the mercy of that which we've chosen to absorb throughout the, you know, the entirety of our life. And so now we find ourselves 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old <clears throat> and having various levels of suffering and stress. And when we look at life through spiritual eyes, what we're saying is there is a way to decompress that. There is a way to release the stress button. There is a way to look at everything very, very differently, which allows us to, to operate much like our beloved Jesus has with greatest of love, much like other great beings, our Buddhas and the Krishnas and the other great beings that have served before us. There is a way to bring ourselves to like life like them. And it starts with uh, uh, pausing whenever we have the opportunity. Now the ideal is of course to be present in every moment. Um, one of the things that my teacher Master Shah speaks about is to have your mind always in the Mingmin acupuncture point. Now this is one way in which you can maintain uh, looking at life through spiritual eyes. <clears throat> and I'll explain why. First of all the Mingmin acupuncture point is a sacred energy point and where it's located is uh, directly behind your navel. You put, touch your finger in your navel and you go straight back to your back and uh, right there where it touches your back is the Ming Min acupuncture point. The reason Master Shah suggests to keep our mind there, he refers to it as the Tao point. He refers to it as the point where heaven and, uh, and earth energies come together, where the yin and yang energies combine. When we place our mind there, we have the highest possibility of receiving enlightened messages, of receiving heaven's love, earth's love, and of not being in our mind. And he, he shares with us 
at all the times at all the retreats keep our mind there keep our mind there he must repeat the, the a hundred times and we need to hear it a hundred times because the minute we leave the retreat we forget why because life comes back and starts whacking us on the head so it's an example of looking at life through spiritual eyes his suggestion is keep our focus there now there's some far significant deeper reasons that I can't go into because those are teachings I'm not allowed to teach on um, but suffice it to say the purpose is to allow us to have our focus in one place so it would be a very excellent example of how to be present um, uh, and use that as your point of focus when you have uh, throughout the day is the ideal but especially if you're kind of in a in a um, unconscious place right you're just driving and you're unconscious and or, or you're doing a task and you're unconscious or you're doing your job and you're unconscious meaning you're not fully present okay and something occurs that triggers uh, a point of presence that you're not wanting to be in a point of action or reaction that you that you don't don't want to go down that road. Um, a immediate one-stop uh, action would be to put your mind in your Mingmen point. You just put your mind there and say, "Okay, this happened. I'm really angry about it. This is an example. But I know better than to let this, you know, ruin my day. I'm going to look at this through spiritual eyes." what was the teaching that everything has a precursor so that means that this event has had a series of things before it that brought this experience to me and you start to widen your view right there because your mind is in your ming men point because you you keep it there as you're going through your process you might have to close your eyes a minute to 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 be in this place and then you move into okay and the wisdom and the teachings are that i need to offer love and forgiveness for this event that has come to me so that I can bring about the the uh, balance as quickly as possible so that I don't don't go down the road of victim or victimizer so that I don't go down the road of blaming others of criticizing of being irritated of being angry of whatever you know is not going to serve you and so in that moment move your place to the Mingman acupuncture point and we're going to go ahead and do an actual practice now and I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, employ some some uh, body power for the Mingmen point and I'm going to employ uh, a chanting for this area uh, but it, the purpose of it is to get us to become familiar with this area as a point of focus because we need the way triggers work is is a trigger can be a trigger for good or trigger for 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 not so good a trigger for good is something happens you immediately go to your Mingmen point this is a good trigger you want to go there because it will assist you in moving forward in love and forgiveness an unpleasant trigger is one where if you had uh, for example a yellow candle in your house and that yellow candle was um, was in the the uh, special place and then that's where the the last argument occurred where you had a major divorce uh, and and the yellow candle was picked up and thrown at you um, then there will always be a negative trigger whenever you see a yellow candle that's an example many of those negative triggers we don't know we don't even see them they're so subconscious but we have a lot of them and so they tend to show up when we're already in an irritated space we're just instantly there if we are able to go back we can actually see that trigger and so what we want to do though is position ourselves to be in our Mingmen acupuncture point okay so that is directly straight back from the, your navel so go straight to the dip in your back and we're gonna use a body power by placing one palm over that so the center of your palm you want to place over that dip in your back <clears throat> so that would mean having your back away from the back of the chair wherever you're sitting the other palm is directly over your belly button and so this is called a body power now we will do a forgiveness practice as well but the key here is to awaken uh, ourself to see life through spiritual eyes so we need to do practices uh, excuse me a forgiveness practice about how we might have kept others from doing that because think about it if we are unable to to be aligned to our soul journey no matter how much we want to we keep getting challenged by all kinds of things all around us 
then that means we could have challenged others. Others could have been on their spiritual journey. There could have been people wanting to become a monk or wanting to become a saint or wanting to become go down the nun path. There could be those that, that wanted to study scripture and spirituality and whatnot. But in previous time, we may have made choices and made them stay and work at the factory, made them stay in the family business instead of go down that path of the spiritual road. And so these are examples about how sometimes those spiritual deaths can come back to us. Okay, so um, we'll go to that body posture in a minute. Let's start by placing our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position, which is the prayer position. And we drop the left hand in front of the heart center. And let us offer first a forgiveness around this so that we can open our eyes. So if you're comfortable, please repeat after me. Dear my beloved creator, dear all humanity, dear all souls, my name is Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher. State your name. I wish to deeply and sincerely apologize if I in this or any time have harmed any souls and kept them from opening their eyes to spirituality. If I have offered wrong thoughts or words or actions that kept them from moving forward on their spiritual journey. If I have uh, spoken inappropriately and caused them to be unable to focus on their spiritual journey. I deeply apologize. I deeply apologize if I offered wrong thoughts or wisdom about how one could align to their spiritual journey, how one could practice to move through life in alignment with their spiritual life. I ask for forgiveness and I ask for your blessings that I could open my eyes more, that I could move my life through every day and see things with a much wider vision. Please bless me to pause and put my mind in my Mingmin point whenever things come up for me. Bless me to move into love and forgiveness as quickly as possible. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now again, let's place our hands back, one over the uh, Mingmin acupuncture point, one over the lower abdomen. And for Slavica that just came in, and Johnny, the Mingmin acupuncture point is straight back from your belly button at that dip in your back. You would place one palm there and the other palm in the front in front of the belly button. This is the body power. For the mind power, you're going to visualize from 360 degrees light coming in to this Mingmin acupuncture point. You want to, you, this is a very small point, so you want to see all this light coming into this very small point, okay? For the sound power, give me a moment. I gotta grab the mantra. So we're gonna chant uh, a mantra that Master Shah chants. Most of you, there will be a few of you that are familiar with it. Most of you will not, and it's called Bao Yuan Shou Yi, Yan Jin Ye. Bao Yuan Shou Yi, Yan Jin Ye. Bao Yuan Shou Yi means gather focus in one point. And yan jin, yan jin ye, uh, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm not going to share, uh, share what that is because I don't want to speak it incorrectly. Okay? So I will chant, bow you and show you yan jin ye. You'll get used to the mantra shortly. Visualizing the light coming into this point. <clears throat> We've already asked it to serve us, so let us allow it to do its service. Let us begin. Bao yan shou yi yan jin ye 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 Bao yuan 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 shou yi yan jin ye 
Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Bao yon shu yi an jin ye Continue to focus on your Mingman acupuncture point. See the light gathering. Bao yon shu yi an jin ye 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 Continue to chant. I will offer a third eye reading so that you know what is happening. At this time, there is layers and layers of heaven that have opened. There are great beings of light gratefully, happily sharing their light with each of those that are doing this practice. The Ming Min acupuncture point is a secret and sacred teaching that has been held very dear for eons. It has been released at this time because it is time for the awakening of humanity. With the light coming into this point, there is a widening, if you will, of the blockages between the heaven and Mother Earth. Think of the human being like the hourglass at the thinnest point. Think of heaven and Mother Earth as the top and the bottom of the hourglass. The widening of the glass allows more of the heaven and earth energy to pour through you. And it is this practice that assists with that and accordingly assists in opening your spiritual eyes. You are all very blessed. Let us continue. Baran Shui and Jin Ye Bao yuan shu yi an 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 jin ye 
Bao yuan shou yi yan jian yan Bao yuan shou yi yan jian yan And now I will walk you through a conversation. Please repeat after me. Dear all souls, I love you. Please forgive me for any times I have commented in disgust if I have spoken disrespectfully to you. Please forgive me for any criticisms that I may have had towards you. Please forgive me for blaming, for thinking that you are the reason I am suffering. Please forgive me for this and all times that I have brought any form of suffering to any souls by my thinking that life was out of my control, by my thinking that I had nothing to do with life and events that happened to me. I now recognize that everything happens as a result of my own choice, my own thoughts, words and actions, and previous lifetime instances. I ask for your forgiveness, and I offer you my unconditional forgiveness for any times you have brought those wrong thoughts, words, or actions to me. Let us chant together. I forgive you, you forgive me. <clears throat> I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So please feel free to share. This is a very simple example of a very simple practice in which we placed our focus in the Tao point, the Mingmen acupuncture point. This Tao point is where heaven and Mother Earth connect. It is the, the point where yin and yang connect. It is the point where we can be in a place of quietude and a place of hearing our soul and our heavens team. And if we move through every moment in life, especially the moments that we can remember and put our mind in the Tao point. And if all we can do when we move into an automatic response is to stop ourselves and put our mind in this Tao point, then that's a very, very good start. From there, we ask, what has brought these conditions to me? See the bigger picture, stretch it out, because your reaction and your response will impact your future and it had come from your past. And so with the spiritual eyes, you allow yourself to see the predecessor that brought it to you. This then allows you to move into love and forgiveness. What do you forgive? You ask for forgiveness for whatever it is that is bringing this moment to you that you may or may not be enjoying. If you are not enjoying it, then you ask for forgiveness for bringing those same conditions upon others. It's very simple to identify what you ask for forgiveness for. And then you bring love. You can chant whatever you like, 
<coughs> with your mind on this point. You can chant uh, uh, Da Ai, the greatest love. You can chant Da Quan Shu, the greatest forgiveness. You can chant Jesus' name, Buddha's name. It matters not what you chant as long as it carries a high frequency of love. And do that for a couple of minutes. I suggest that you stop and do a forgiveness practice during that mantra and then continue. You will discover that you could significantly unwind or completely dissolve major trauma kind of conditions by this very simple practice. And the ability to constantly keep your mind in the Ming Men point will give you basically a trigger, a place to always go to as your, your go-to point, so to speak, where you allow yourself to see life through these wider eyes, allow yourself to not get caught up in this thing that we call life. Allow yourself to bring your highest and best version of you to your children, to bring your highest and best version of you to, um, to your um, uh, work and to every other place in your life. So I'd like to uh, finish by letting you all know that there is a crown chakra blessing available. The honor fee is a hundred dollars and it is for um, aligning yourself to see life through your spiritual eyes. What it will do in essence is remove a lot of the mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs that inhibit you from being more and more present. To res that These are the things that inhibit you from responding the highest and best way. It will allow you to bring your mind into human point much faster and be in the right place so that you don't create a future of additional blockages. So this crown chakra is a blessing is available. I will keep it open for one week. Uh, for those on podcast, um, just check with me and I'll just check guidance to see if it's still available to you since you might not hear the podcast for a while. But for all those that are watching live, it'll be one week. So it's my honor to serve you. I will be back here tomorrow. Please um, go to my website uh, and, and check out my energy center practices. There's a lot of neat new information there. I am now offering it to where you can call in from worldwide, um, from anywhere in the world, and it's typically free for almost every country in the world. And to be able to do energy practices uh, together in a group is extraordinary. It can help you so much. Um, also, uh, quick calling this weekend in the Honolulu Center. Myself and Master Patrick will be offering an introductory class, only a few hours, on the nature of the five elements and their associations to our life. Okay, And I think the class is only $25, very affordable. So Kristen will post something on there. She's already done it. Um, and so you can follow that link to learn more. At this point, I don't think the registration link is functional, so you can call us at the center at 808-988-8090. Uh, uh, so uh, my phone is ringing off the hook from some important people, so I have to connect with them now. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All beings of light, please respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody.